Hello, and welcome to the final video in the series where we finally cover how to interpret and make practical use of the metrics we've talked about in the previous videos. This will be the most complex topic that we cover, but we'll try to stick to the general high-level takeaways instead of focusing on the technical minutiae. To do that, we'll briefly touch upon how the metrics are calculated and plotted, which metrics are most important to how a puppet infrastructure operates, and some examples of real-world problems that we solved with metrics and the techniques involved in doing so. In terms of calculating the metrics, we need to revisit the idea of aggregation that we talked about in part one. Creating a time series plot requires aggregate values, and there are two main categories of measurements that we need to aggregate from our puppet metrics. Averages and percentiles, and counts. The short answer to the first category is that the metrics library we use takes care of it for us. If you would like to see a presentation by the author of this library that goes into much more detail about the how and why that these metrics are important, we have a link in the description and I would highly recommend watching that. The slightly longer answer is that the averages are calculated using a moving average, specifically an exponentially weighted moving average. For counts, these are more straightforward and are a sum representing a total value since the start of the respective service. Let's look at one of our dashboards for our demonstration. Here we have a panel that displays the average for JRubies for each Puppet server node in my lab. We can see that one server has an average of approximately three free JRubies, while the other is consistently at one free JRuby. If we look at the query behind this panel, which is displayed in the bottom left down here, we can see that we're actually using the distinct aggregation function on the average free JRubies field. But why are we using a distinct aggregation function when this is dealing with averages? Well, the reason is that the metrics library that calculates and returns the measurement is doing the work to determine the average for us. Behind the scenes, Puppet Server is using a sampling rate of, I believe, every five seconds to calculate and track this value over time. So when we ask Puppet Server to give us this measurement, it returns one distinct value that represents a pre-calculated average. Just in case I'm getting a little too technical here, the main takeaway is that by doing the work to calculate and return these averages inside of Puppet Server, we greatly simplify the dashboards. The only aggregation we need to do here in these panels is to select every distinct measurement that we have because we already know that each value is an average. Now let's switch over to some PuppetDB panels to demonstrate percentiles, specifically these four in the middle here. These are mostly the same as averages and are essentially a difference in which field names are returned by the metrics, but I think it's worth mentioning. If we look at this panel in the top left for processing times, it shows some of the operations done by PuppetDB, namely replace catalog, replace fax, and submit report. We can see from the title that we're using the 95th percentile measurement in the graph, which is a measurement we get from a histogram that's generated by the metrics library that we use. This essentially means that for a given data point in the graph, 95% of the measurements taken fall at or below this value. For example, if we look at this one here, this shows a value of 754 milliseconds for the store report operation. So at this point in time, the vast majority of reports are being processed in about 750 milliseconds or less. And again, that's based on a weighted average inside of Puppet Server. We do also have some panels representing the maximum duration of these requests, and I believe these are technically implemented as the 999th percentile. You are more likely to see flat lines like this, as the maximum value is less likely to change than a median or 95th percentile. To wrap these up, these are mostly a difference in field names like I mentioned earlier. So for example, the average free JRubies field is technically the 50th percentile, just labeled as an average. Well, for some of these, we directly give you the 50th percentile, 95th percentile, etc. I'm not sure exactly why we've done this historically, but there you have it. A quick example of the other category of metrics I mentioned earlier, which is counts, uh, specifically these two on the bottom right here. These measurements track the total number of times an action was performed since the latest restart of the service. For example, the total values for replace catalog, replace fax, and store report over here. But if we use distinct aggregation for these, they would basically be linear plots that just go up in value over time, which isn't too interesting or very useful. That's why for the panels that deal with counts, we plot the difference in the values over time with the idea that you can identify an increase or decrease in the number of actions as opposed to just a large value that increases linearly. Last note on these, we do have some panels like this one here for rates, which are very similar to counts. The difference is mostly in the uh, unit of measurement. 
So these are tracked in number of operations per second, while the count, like I mentioned, is a difference of the total value. So these panels should largely mirror each other. Next, we'll be going over a few metrics that are critical to understand in terms of how a Puppet infrastructure operates. We've used the average requested JRubies and average free JRubies metrics before in some previous examples, because they are perhaps the most important ones. So to understand those, we'll need to briefly talk about how we use JRuby. At a high level, JRuby is a framework written in Java that provides a Ruby implementation, or a way to actually execute Ruby code on a given system. The reason that we use it mostly comes down to parallelism. Ruby, or I should really say most Ruby interpreters like CRuby, don't have what's called thread safety, where multiple threads can run simultaneously. They have what's called the global interpreter lock, or global virtual machine lock, depending on the Ruby version and who you ask, that ensures that only one thread runs at a time by obtaining and releasing the global lock. Java, on the other hand, does have thread safety and allows multiple threads to run at the exact same time. So by using JRuby, we get better performance at scale by being able to run multiple Ruby threads simultaneously. JRuby provides this by maintaining a pool of complete Ruby environments, or what we refer to individually as JRubies. When Puppet Server receives a request that involves executing Ruby code, it borrows a JRuby from the pool, completes the request, and then returns it back to the pool. If there are no free JRubies, it queues the request until one becomes available. That brings us back to these metrics related to JRuby usage, namely average requested and average free. If the value of average requested JRubies is consistently above zero, that means more work is being requested of Puppet Server than it's capable of doing, which is one of the more detrimental things that can happen to your Puppet infrastructure. However, a non-zero value isn't necessarily a reason to panic, because there are many reasons why we make queue requests. The important detail is whether the value returns to zero, meaning that the queue was worked through, or if the value is always higher than zero, meaning there are always outstanding requests. Let's look at a practical example. The examples I'll be using do come from real-world data that we've seen in support cases, but host names and other identifying information have been redacted to protect the innocent. Here we're looking at the composite performance panel at the top, and the two panels for average requested and average free JRubies. We can see spikes in requested JRubies, which then fall back to zero, or very close to zero. If we look at the larger spikes in this panel, we can see a pattern start to emerge. So if we start here, 2035, 2105, 2135, 2205, etc., we can see that they're all exactly 30 minutes apart. This is a good example of what's called the thundering herd problem, which is a term I first heard here at Puppet, but is actually not unique to us. It just means when work is piling up at certain intervals and is not evenly spaced out. Since the default run interval of the Puppet agent is 30 minutes, that explains why we're seeing the spikes at even 30 minute intervals. So for each 30 minute interval, we see a herd of requests come in and then Puppet Server works it back down to zero and then the cycle restarts every 30 minutes. To note, there are a few ways to address this issue by spreading out the load, such as by setting the display option on agents and restarting their Puppet agent service which will make it wait a random amount of time before it requests its next catalog. For PE customers, we also have a knowledge base article with more information on this topic. But is this specific example a critical problem that needs immediate attention? At this point, no, because we can see there are always JRubies available, and we always work the queue back down to zero. However, it could easily turn into a real problem if something adds more load to Puppet Server. That can be caused by any number of things, but a common one is a code change that induces more work during catalog compilation. And if we move ahead in these metrics, we do see this specific thing happen. Now at this point in time, at the start of the panels, we can see the same type of thundering herd, but it's now a bit worse with more requests being queued up to 50 or so. So maybe some kind of code change has caused that to happen, but the queue is still being worked back down to zero. However, around here, we can see a critical problem start to happen. At this data point, we begin to see a consistently high value for requested JRubies and an average of exactly zero free, which means the Puppet server is having a substantial amount of trouble working down its queue. In this case, being able to see exactly when the behavior changed was the key detail, since the customer was able to trace this back to a code change that was deployed at this point in time, 
and reverting it did fix the issue. So this one serves as a great two-for-one example for this video because we've explained why these metrics are very important, and it also demonstrates an important technique for interpreting the metrics in general, which is identifying trends. I know that it sounds simple in the abstract, but looking for changes and different trends in the data is very helpful in tracking down issues. The next technique that can often be useful in tracking down issues is to identify outliers in the data. We sometimes see specific actions that take longer to complete than others, so identifying outliers or metrics that stand out from others can be very useful. Now for this example I had to redact it a little bit differently because the host name is actually part of the field name, so the legend at the bottom says that these are all the same fields, but they are in fact different. Regardless, we can see the one in red is definitely an outlier and is much slower relative to the other metrics. It shows the PubDB fax find operation is very slow during these intervals. You would have to look at the PubDB documentation to know exactly what this means, but this represents the time it takes for PubDB to respond with a set of facts for a given node. In this case, the problem ended up being a slow link between the nodes running Puppet Server and PubDB, and we were able to figure out the issue by identifying this particular outlier. Finally, the last general technique we'll go over is looking for correlations between different panels and different metrics. I'll be reusing the last example because it also works well here. If we start looking at the average requested JRubies at the top here, we can see a bit of herding similar to the first example, but also times where we consistently queue requests and completely run out of free JRubies. There can be many different reasons for this, but looking for correlations between the metrics can often help find the root cause, so I've gone ahead and rearranged the panels to best show this. If we move the mouse around to look at the grid overlay, we can see changes happening to all of these panels at roughly the same time, a little bit after this 6 o'clock mark. This would take some investigation and knowledge about how Puppet works, but we're seeing this increase in queued requests because this node metric that I've highlighted here slows down, and it in turn is slowing down because of the Puppet DB fax find operation that we just went over. When an agent requests a catalog from Puppet Server, it begins by submitting one of these node requests to determine its environment and a few other things. To fulfill that request, Puppet Server needs to ask PuppetDB for the node's facts, which is what this PuppetDB facts find operation represents. So in this case, we were able to prove that the behavior of queuing request was being caused by the slow response from PuppetDB for the node facts, because that in turn was slowing down the slash node operation which meant that all the JRubies in the pool were being consumed to service these requests. If that all sounds a bit complicated, well, that's because it is, but the general concept and how we got started tracking down the behavior was relatively straightforward. We looked for changes in behavior and trends in the data that were happening at the same time, and we did that by moving around these graphs and using the grid overlay, and then we worked it out from there. And that brings us to the conclusion of this video and this entire series about Puppet Metrics. To briefly recap this one, the most important metrics that we talked about tend to be those relating to JRuby usage, and the three general techniques that we demonstrated were looking for changes in established behavior, any outliers in specific metrics that stand out for whatever reason, and correlating different metrics to try and identify a root cause. I hope I was able to show you at least a little bit about why these are important and how to get started collecting and using them, and I thank you guys very much for watching this. Take care.